All right. Chat, chat, everybody. Welcome to Rebel Force Radio live from ICCCon in Nashville at the beautiful, gorgeous Sheraton Music City Hotel and Convention Center. We are live from the podcast room, and it feels a little bit like podcast open mic, <laughs> <laughs> like they're, we're auditioning for something. Um, we're going to try out new material here. Um, but no, it's, it's awesome. So we're streaming worldwide on the ICC. Uh, see Facebook page and on the uh, YouTube channel and the main thing is it just feels great to be back together again in person yeah yeah and I know and, and, and credit where credit is due because it was this convention that showed the rest of the industry how to do it when everyone was trying to figure out how to come back and Mike and his team just did it so hats off to them yeah. because they didn't wait around and ask permission or any of that. Uh, but introductions in order. We do know there are new uh, people uh, joining us that haven't listened to Rebel Force Radio or watched us. Uh, so if this is your first time, this is RFR, your source for the Force, your home for everything and all things Star Wars. My name is Jason, and with me, as always, my good friend and yours from Chicago, Jimmy Mack. Hey, Jason. Hey, Star Wars fans. Yes. So happy to be here in Nashville. You, you guys have no idea how long I wanted to do a podcast from Nashville. And I'm so happy we're able to do it with so many fine-looking people. This is a fine-looking audience of Star Wars. Tremendous. Fans. Some uh, OG yes. fans that go back with us for a long time. This is true. Listeners going back to day one, it yeah. seems like. Yeah. So thank you all for turning out. We really appreciate it. And um, we've had a really good time so far. I mean, I, I took a bit of a gamble bringing the family with me. I knew that was going to be... I mean, you've done this many times. I mean, we did the Disney trips and all that. This is my first time mm -hmm. bringing the family to a convention. It's been really great. Everybody's just been, Parker got uh, uh, noticed outside. No kidding. Yeah, we were waiting for the, the, the Uber Eats. Uh-huh. Yeah, and some guy comes up and he goes, you're Parker, aren't you? <laughs> my son's nine. Uh -oh. And he was like, stranger danger. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at him like, he's okay. He's okay. Wow. Like, yeah. Is he, he thought that was pretty cool. Is that person here in the room? Does anybody want to admit? Tim? Hey, Marcus is here. Marcus from hey. the 501st, ladies and gentlemen. Look at him over there. There he is. Look at him. There's a good. Come on up here for a second, Marcus. I want to say hi to you. Can you come on? Can you? I don't he's know he's in full armor, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, this might be difficult for him to get up on the stage. I don't know. We have steps uh, over yeah, come here. on over here. We got steps. Marcus is an old friend of ours. He's from the 501st. As if you couldn't see, he's uh, splendid looking in his pure white stormtrooper armor. And uh, come on up. Come on. You can't sit. You can't sit, but maybe you can. Right, don't sit. Um, but uh, we'll just move the mic over here. Can he sit? Can he sit? Come on, give it a shot. Oh, here he goes. Ouch! Ow! Oh! Nope, it's not <laughs> happening. It's it's. Uh, nope, nope, hey, have you ever seen a stormtrooper try to sit down? Look, <laughs> <laughs> now you know why. Thank you, brother. <laughs> I mean, I, I did want to ask you about uh, any injuries you may have sustained. Can we move this up a little? Bit? Um, any injuries you may have sustained while out trooping? Uh, just your just your occasional armor bites here in the. Uh, yeah. Yeah, when I like bend. Have you seen the video of the stormtrooper falling down the stairs? Yes. Now, is uh, anything like that? No, no, no. Well, I mean, uh, without cameras, yeah, but I mean. No, no, nothing. Come on, just admit it. <laughs> no. What, what's I, the, w I don't know how to ask this question, but what was the weirdest thing you've ever done in stormtrooper armor? Uh, I have some guys um, strap my crotch, but that's about it. <laughs> the line is forming now. <laughs> So that's a little something we didn't know was going to happen here at the convention. But yeah. if, if people do want, I'm sure you'll maybe take a donation for a charity yeah. and they can come up and, and engage in that activity with you, right? Correct. <laughs> okay. If you want to give it a shot live on stage, are you more than welcome to. All right. Marcus is available for photo ops throughout the entire weekend here at ICC. He's and crotch strapping. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If you so desire. Um, but the force is with him and we're so happy to see him. I have him. a question for you. Yeah. Um, does anybody know, uh, know uh, Puppet Lando? Puppet. Are you familiar? Puppet. <laughs> yeah. Puppet Lando is couldn't make it. No. Is he here? He couldn't make the trip. Sorry. He will be in Anaheim, though. Okay. But uh, Puppet Lando, he has a very busy schedule, as oh, you yeah. could imagine. 
And, He's uh, actually shooting a new music video. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Follow up to my felt needs to be felt. Oh. <laughs> um, we're working on a Puppet Lando EP, actually. Okay. So maybe you can get the Legion behind that and. Uh, you can join us for the world tour. Okay. <laughs> With it's only two Lando. songs, so it's I, a very short show. I have something for you. Um, what do you have? Could you give me a hand? Yeah. No. Oh, but uh oh. Hold on. And I need you to look that way. Okay. Sorry. All right. Marcus oh. has got something for us. Oh. And he wants me to look okay. that way. I get, I, I get nervous diverting my attention from a stormtrooper standing behind me. Oh. Hold on, hold on. Maybe it's. Don't look. <laughs> you know. The Empire is oppressive and evil. You guys are the bad guys. I just want to point that out. <laughs> okay. Should I look? Should, I don't know what's behind me, and I'm afraid to look. Should I look? Can yeah. I look? Since, since uh, Lando couldn't make it, uh oh. your other friend is here. And that's for you, my friend. Oh, my God. It's Zero the Hut. It's a puppet Zero the Hut. Go ahead. Puppet zero, ladies and gentlemen. Get, get your fingers All right. in the straps. All right. Oh, there's straps. straps. I'm not a very good puppeteer. Thank you. All right. Here we go. Yeah, who needs the microphone? You and me. I can, I can hold it. I got you. Nope. All right. Look Don't at throw. the puppet, not me. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> a senator in this neighborhood. <laughs> oh, the horror. <laughs> All right, so who, uh, where did you get this? This is I amazing. Had, I, I had it made. Um. Yeah, this is crazy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I feel like I'm on some kind of weird, <laughs> I mean, like, was something in this coffee? <laughs> I, I'm, I don't know what to say. That's man. incredible. That you is absolutely incredible. We're going to milk this thing for all its <laughs> worth <laughs> for years to come. Ain't that right? That is you damn straight. That is definitely. Like I love you, Marcus. I love you. I want to take him home with me. <laughs> He's all yours. <laughs> Talk about the gift that keeps on giving. Oh, you guys. This is crazy. This is crazy. Well, we're going to have to crack. We can see. We can come up he with comes with his own box, too. Yeah. yeah. Like I, the I don't know what kind of a recording hands? career this guy's oh. going to have. Oh, it's like it's like a Not shot. shot. So oh, I can, I can yeah. use the stick and everything. Put a hand up. Yeah. I don't know what to say, Marcus. I'm blown away. Ladies and gentlemen, Marcus wow. Storing, 501st. Are you kidding me? Dude, that's amazing. Thank Wendy is going to be so happy <laughs> when she comes home and finds this guy in bed with us. Oh, uh, maybe she's watching. Hello, Wendy. Zero's coming home, honey. Uh, the horror. My life is never going to be the same. The horror. Oh, my God. That's Does anybody want to ask Zero the Hut a question while he's here? Yeah, Jeff. Is uh, Zero and Puppet Lando going to go? Are Zero? Are you talking fisticuffs? Mr. Uh, Zero, uh, are you planning on uh, bumping nasties with Puppet Lando at some point? I don't think that's very appropriate. Jeff Holland. <laughs> <laughs> that's, ladies and gentlemen, RFR VIP Jeff Holland is here. Yes. Patreon listeners and supporters might know him from the RFR Q&A. We have so many familiar faces and friends here. People who've listened to the show for a long time. People I've, I've conversed with via so... Get out of the way, Zero. <laughs> you can see right there. Oh, look at there. In the chair. Hello. You got too close to me there. But, it, you know, so many people I've talked to via social media and yeah. stuff. It's so wonderful to meet people it for really the first is. time face-to-face. -face. We have a Jimmy Mac cosplayer here today. Is he, is he as if the this show couldn't get any more weird. There he is. Look at him back here, there. Come on, come on up come, here. Step on Sir. up. Is that Chris? Is that Chris? Yes. Chris, you want to come on up here? I, I want everyone to see what Jimmy Mac cosplaying looks like. Usually I look in the mirror just to see this, but I mean, this is pretty accurate. He doesn't have his microphone with him. Let's just come on up here uh, so uh, the cameras can get you. Uh, this is pretty much it. <laughs> I'd say it, it's pretty accurate. Hey, Star Wars fans. There you go. There you go. Well, thank you, man. I just wanted to show you off because I'm rather uh, flattered and horrified at the same time. 
<laughs> and, uh, by the way, I did say that's the cheapest cosplay you're ever going to find. But he quickly uh, corrected me and said, no, your merch is too expensive. So <laughs> He does have an RFR shirt, <laughs> and underneath it he has a Chut Chut shirt. And uh, with that is a hoodie. Yeah. So he's sweating bullets. To add more authenticity to the cosplay, he's sweating. The sweat eye Jedi at one time. Uh, uh, actually, Nick Allard, the uh, swordsman and uh, stunt coordinator from the prequels, I actually learned how to saber duel from the master himself. And I was dripping in buckets of sweat, flop sweat. And um, he commented on it uh, as profusely as I was perspiring. And it was very embarrassing. And I became known as the sweat Eye Jedi from that point on. <laughs> so if you're going to be christened by somebody, I mean, you know, Nick Gillard, that's, that's the way to do that's it. That's the way to do it. That comes with a lot of uh, yeah. authority. Well, um, speaking of guests, we have a couple of guests. If you are a member of the Rebel Force Radio Patreon, in which uh, we hope that uh, some of you are, and we know some of you are, we've got the freaks in the house. we got the Babu yeah. freaks. Ladies and gentlemen, Tyler Page from the Babu Freaks, Brian Klein. <laughs> Patreon supporters know these guys as the Babu Freaks. Our, our other fellow freak, Brian or Barry Harmon, couldn't make it. <laughs> yeah, but we got two Babu Freaks with us. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. given the fact that this is, I think, the first time for all of us at this particular show, yeah. what are your what are your thoughts? That we were thinking that this feels. And I mean this in the absolute best way, like old school, like the old Star Wars fan days in Texas, where it's just, you know, you're not treated just like a piece of meat like you are at the big shows. Uh, what are you thinking about uh, your experience so far? I've liked it so far. It's been nice and intimate, and you get to do everything. We went in for the Ian panel for a bit, and you were you got right in. You get to go into the booths for the, the show floor, and... Yeah, and you're yeah. not at like a stadium no, watching it's not Ian McDermott. It's not a cattle call either. Right, you know, right. Besides getting in here, you know, that just shows how much how many people are here with a little bit of time to get in. But it's been great so far, and the atmosphere is. It's just also just great to be back in a setting like this too. So, yeah, and uh, it's a great family show, I think. So if mm -hmm. you're if you're trying to get you know the kids to a show and you you know celebration or something like that would just blow their minds and mm -hmm. you know it'd be too much for them. This is a great way to introduce them to the whole idea. And then y you know you, like I say, you're right up on top of the actors and the personalities and the cosplayers and everything. It really is it's tremendous. But the one thing that I noticed right away in going into the dealer room was you know you have those those fantasy dreams about like going into a children's palace like in 1980. Mm -hmm. Just see walls oh, of vintage yes. stuff. That's what this dealer <laughs> room is like. I've never seen so much vintage Star Wars in my life in one place. Incredible. Did you pick anything up? Yeah, I I was looking for the San Diego Comic Con 2019 Boba Fett exclusive, and normally it's out of my price range, but here I was able to talk to a guy and make something work. So oh. right away, you know, they work with you. Yeah, 200 bucks right away. Wow. Within wow. the first five minutes. Of is the which one is that? Uh, it's got the one with the Kenner paint job instead of the uh, oh right right right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Black, Black series yeah very cool how about you I've got about four things in mind I'm doing the oh you're still scoping yeah, I'm scoping are you gonna let us know what they are yeah. so that we can buy them first I'll definitely oh um no <laughs> jack up the price <laughs> <laughs> like if you see a guy in a hello there shirt and he wants to buy them <laughs> <laughs> no there was a couple <laughs> um I probably would go back today and. Probably make an offer, or at least pick one of the things up, because there's one that was quite within my range. Which is you're burying the lead. Something on the floor. Oh, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm not gonna say now to the people because they're gonna oh, like they hijack it. They so. would do that to you. Are your um is, is, your, is your wife watching or something? You're kind of no, afraid. Okay. No, no, Liz. I well, Liz might be watching, but she's uh she's fully supportive of it. So. Oh, all right. That's so. great. It, it, oh, that's the only way it's gonna work. Yes. It's either that. Or you just hide everything in a basement. <laughs> oh, I know. And I have friends that are like that. And like I'm just I like, do. how do you all of a sudden pull out a, a, a Jabba skiff and say, like, or the, the sail barge and be like, oh, I just had this. No, you didn't. That thing is like a piece of furniture almost. So. Right. <laughs> well, the best thing about this is Jimmy will walk in with this uh, Zero the Hut puppet. Hello. Wendy won't even do a second look. Yeah. She'll just be like, uh, Jim's home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm home too, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Mack, though, you got one of your Grail items yesterday. Yes, I did. Yeah. I did. Um, you know, collecting Star Wars old school stuff since 1978. 
it's it's been a blast but there's been some casualties along the way and uh me and my brother we saved all those boxes we weren't thinking as investors as kids we just liked the boxes and we saved them all and uh, they all got trashed in a sump pump accident circa 1986 oh. and since then i've just been trying to fill in all of those holes in my collection and one of the things i've always loved is the darth vader tie fighter the vintage kenner darth vader tie fighter i love the box i love everything about it and i uh, have turned down purchasing it in the past but i found a price that i couldn't beat here at this show. Uh, the pricing at this show is great. Yeah. They're yeah. not trying to just rake you over the coals. A lot of these dealers are very fair in their pricing. Mm -hmm. Well, I think because they're getting a fair price on their table and their exhibit space, so they don't have to have that, yeah. like, you know, that you markup. Make up that nice. Right yeah. away. So yeah. the savings get passed on to people like us. For yeah. sure. So uh, that's a good deal. Yes, it is. Yeah, I, d I don't know so it if I should be interrupting this entire show. No, no. no. But I, can, <laughs> I, I can't help myself. <laughs> the horror. Go, yeah, go down there. Go away. Go now I'm gonna just wait for you to ask me my next question, Swank. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did want to I thought you guys might throw out a topic for us to uh, talk about. I don't know if we're kind of putting you on the spot, but is there anything kind of in the scope of what's happening right now with Star Wars that, uh, you know, you've got us, you've got the whole audience here to weigh in on. You got what's me. The, when, you, when you put your little head on the pillow at night, Tyler, what <laughs> weighs on you as a Star Wars fan, good or bad? Uh, everything. But uh, <laughs> really, right now, Kenobi, I mean. That's what I we're all talking I about. I hear right? yeah. there was uh, some conversations had yesterday here. That yes, were uh, pretty interesting. Um, I wasn't supposed to say anything about that. What? Yeah. What? <laughs> what? What? What conversation? Well, Ian said something at his panel that he wasn't supposed to say. I guess. Ian McDermott. Right. Yeah. Get right in the microphone and, and tell us exactly yeah. what he said. You can tell us. He's right out there. Um, he said it was okay. He's petting the kangaroo. <laughs> you, you may see him on Disney Plus <laughs> relatively soon. So he said what? He will, you may see him on Disney Plus relatively soon. All right. Did he swear you into secrecy or you could no, not I mean reveal this? He said it in front of, I mean, I, I heard it secondhand from uh, our friend Todd. Oh, he said yeah. it day oh, two? Okay, so I guess it's out yeah. there anyway. Oh, so he's uh, yeah. Never listen to me then. Yeah. All right, he's yeah. trolling. Well, hmm. I, so you're okay. fine. <laughs> get squad, get, you know, is that a, a, Of you all out there, is that a surprise to anybody, just out of curiosity? No. To see uh, in uh, McDiarmid. Uh, right. Doesn't he sort of have to be in it? Yeah. A little much, bit. Yeah. I mean, um, we know we're going to have Vader and... Vader is, uh, there's actually a recent interview with Hayden Christensen where he's talking about, you know, getting in the head of Vader at this time, which I like that idea because I think it's just going to be, he's going to be a little more layered than what we saw in Rogue One. I think we're going to have probably some Rogue One moments, hopefully, but I think there we're also going to be getting under the helmet a bit, and um, Palpatine is so crucial to that. Yeah. He's got to be there. you got to see that manipulation continuing on throughout his uh, his development as a character, so and we have to have Ian McDiarmid, right? Oh, definitely, mm -hmm. for sure. You yeah. think? You would think? And then, of course, Liam Neeson continues to uh, say uh, like he he's no not going, going to on. be yeah. in. He pretends Kenobi. he doesn't even know what Star Wars is. Yeah, he does. <laughs> really? Uh, so, what is this uh, streaming? Yeah. I'm not sure. You know, <laughs> sounds like a good idea. You know, maybe they should do it sometime. Yeah, well, they're doing it now, Liam. They're, well, when do they start? They've already started, Liam. It's already <laughs> out there. You can get the app. You can download it. So you would be great. Oh, that'd be good. If they did that, that would be wonderful. Well, they're doing it, Liam. What if you could just get this stuff on your phone or your iPad? You know, sure, right? you know. They looked into that? Yeah, you got to just download it. That's what the kids do. He only I got gets his news mm. from people who are interviewing him. That's yeah, right, right. right. <laughs> Otherwise, he's yeah. like, you know he's living on a ranch somewhere. No, I'm, 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 I'm hip. I'm up to date. <laughs> I have a MySpace page, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, we're talking about uh, Ewan McGregor and Kenobi, so why don't we, uh, do you mind if we do some headlines? We do some headlines? Do you mind, what? Zero? I don't mind. <laughs> Does the audience mind? Oh, all right, let's do it. They don't mind. That's 
good news. The closer I have good news. Boy, that's some high tech production from Swank right there. <laughs> He's really bringing his A game today. Game prepared. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got some headlines here. Ewan McGregor says. I turned around and I'm gonna clean this up. It's a family show. We have we have some. Uh, What's it, it? Oh, it's the say fish, fish yeah. instead of that. Okay. Can you do that? Can you yeah. say fish instead of the f word? I'll try. I appreciate. I that. turned I around it. and fishing Darth Vader was coming at me. It scared the. What should we use for that? Fish. Um, <laughs> the uh, shark. It scared the shock out of me. <laughs> All right. One more time, please. We should get yeah. James Arnold Taylor in here to read these lines. Right. <laughs> Maybe if I yell it loud enough, yeah, things will pop in. Or if you do just a really bad Obi Wan. If you do, because he busts in like you know he's an EMT and <laughs> <laughs> he's yeah, Did bad. I do a bad impression. <laughs> like the Kool Aid Man or something. Just yeah, busts yeah, in the right. wall. James Arnold Taylor yeah. shape in the wall. Yeah, he just busts through. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> I turned around and fishing Darth Vader was coming at me. It scared the shock out of me. That's what Ewan McGregor said. That works. Uh, so he was talking to Total Film, and yeah, he says, I've never met Darth Vader. And th that is true. I mean, when you think about it, he didn't have any screen time with him, and it's, uh, I don't even think he was actually on set when Hayden was doing his Revenge of the Sith stuff. Um, so he says, uh, I had rehearsed the scene with Vader, but not with the helmet on or anything like that. When we came to do the scene, when they shouted, action, he had to come from behind me. I turned around, and fishing Darth Vader <laughs> was, I don't know, fishing like with a rod. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the hat with the lures in there. <laughs> Instead of the lightsaber, it's a fishing rod. Play me cooler beer. Fishing <laughs> Darth Vader was coming at me. It was like I was six again. I'd never acted into Vader's helmet. I'd never looked him in the eye. It scared the shark out of me. I'm not joking. It gave me a proper jolt of absolute fear. I was like, oh, my God, this is not acting. This is real. I'm really, truly frightened. And the same thing would happen with stormtroopers. I'd worked with clone troopers. All right, blah, 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 blah. And he says, it's like fishing hell. But I have to say, um, the first time when I went to the, the Magic of Myth exhibit years and years and years ago, and that was the first time I ever got up and close with the costumes. Mm -hmm. And that was before I ever saw a, a 501st uh, troop of trooping. And when you get, you know, especially with someone, you know, my size, when you get up to that Vader costume, and it's in the, I mean, it's in really yeah. intimidating. Now there's somebody underneath it, you know, they're coming at you with a lightsaber. So I can understand. It's like, um, uh, you know, as kids growing up with this stuff, I mean, there was nobody more scary. Especially in that original generation before we, you know, we kind of got emo. But when we thought he was just like a crazy robot or so, you know what I mean. Yeah. It's a little different now. Yeah. W before it was like we didn't know what that was other than like a cauliflower underneath. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, now he's a, he, he's hating Christians. Today. Right. So right. <laughs> the, the the tone has changed a little. Right. Bit. Right. 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 From the days when you thought he was like a hideous monster underneath. I used to play with these uh, action figures when I was a kid. The the twelve inch one. Mm -hmm. And I had Vader, Leia, and Luke. And this is this is my scenario. I've had it on a table. And Luke defeats Vader, and he's down. And Vader's down, and he's dead. And Luke, Leia goes, well, we better take a look at what's under that helmet, right? Right. And so Luke flips off the helmet with his lightsaber, which I think <laughs> is impossible. He would just slice that. <laughs> but it would flip off. And it made sense when you were, you know, oh, nine. Oh, no. How he's just horrifying and stuff. But as the director, the audience never sees it. Oh, that's and then cheap. Luke puts his arm around Leia, and they walk off into the twin setting suns. That's how I would have ended Return. That was your Star action Wars. figure role, or yeah, yeah, role age play, ten, I age ten, kid that's in the seventies. Not bad. Not yeah. bad. Um, Does so anyone still remember the plots that you had with your action figures and some of the oh stories? Yeah. yeah what, what do you guys? Do, do you remember one? One of them it had to do with it was all of them on Hoth, and <laughs> we were able to play with all the stuff in the snow, and it was just basically like a battle royal, mm -hmm. like wrestling style, where they would come in one on one and fight each other, and then the next guy would come in, and then I'd forget about it, and come next spring I'd have all my toys out in the, the front yard in the snow, and because <laughs> I'd forget and be like it snowed again, like where did I put them? That was a limitation because you could only work two characters at a time, right? And yet, so sometimes you'd have like a whole group of them, you just kind of like you know. You know, throw them around and you know, well, you the snow's great because you, you can plant them and they'd stay standing. Yeah, you know, if you mm. try to do it in like the, the grass or whatever, an endor, they just start falling over and then you might lose them if your dad didn't cut the grass in a while. And 
<laughs> you know, so right. at least with the right. show, they stay standing, and then your mom will call you in, you forget yeah. about it, you'll be playing some Atari, and then you go, like, oh, where's the toy? Oh, the kid who back. forgets his action figures outside. Has anybody seen this photo? Somebody was cleaning out a bunch of brush and overgrowth in their backyard uh, at, the, at the home they grew up in, in. It's like 30 years later. And they're cleaning up around a tree. And they look in the trunk of the tree. You can see that there's a, a vintage stormtrooper. Oh, and the tree trunk actually grew around huh. the action figure, and it became part of the trunk of the tree itself. It was just sticking out of the thing. Nice. It grew up. It, the tree grew around the action figure. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one. Uh, the tree's not, not going to stop the tree. I've been looking at all the trees in my backyard for <laughs> years to try to find something like this. Has anybody seen that picture online? Or am it's I very tripping? cool. It, it, it was it, it, incredible find yeah. for me to see that. And uh, I buried a Chewbacca action figure. You one. buried it. Why yeah. did you bury a Chewbacca? Well, things didn't work out so well for Chewie in my uh, imagination, and so he died, and we, I buried him in my grandma's flower garden, and when he was un I, he was there for a good three or four years, mm -hmm. had to have been, and then when he got unearthed, grandma was, you know, planting some more posies, as she called him out there, and pulled him out, and all of his limbs turned green. Oh, I've so heard of this. The body was, you know, the same color, the brown, but the limbs were green. And then I tried this trick where I would like dye him, you know, try to bring the brown. The brown back. It's a whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> toy ploy makes it look very easy, but it's it's not that it's not that simple. I tried dyeing him, and he turned completely blonde. So now he's. Uh, you've not, you, I've sent you pictures of this. It, it, he's like um, I don't know. Like uh, who is the who is the blonde Wookie on uh, in the holiday special? Wasn't it? Uh, is there a blonde Wookie in the holiday well, special? Well, the, the old man is pretty light, isn't he? Yeah, he's the one kind of gray. Itchy? Itchy. 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 Yeah. He's kinda, yeah. Yeah. He's blind on some TVs because of the quality of TVs back then. Yeah, that's the other thing. You can't get a good copy of that thing. Yeah. So you won't really know what it is. Let's get back to uh, Ewan McGregor. He says that um, he said it's like actual childhood memories of being scared. That's how deeply it's in us. I've acted for 30 years, and I've never been genuinely frightened when I'm acting frightened. But I had moments on this that were genuinely quite scary. Um, so I'm wondering, I mean, if Ewan McGregor is freaking out on the set, are we going to see, do you think it's going to be more of that sort of uh, horror-esque style of Vader that yeah. we saw in Rogue One? They're going to go for the jump scares and all of that? Oh, I would love that. I, I would love to see that. I mean, you'd have to take advantage of the character for that potential alone. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's just scratching the surface of what you could do with Darth Vader. Well, I was thinking about that. I was like, well, really, this wasn't really part of the way the character was portrayed in the original. And then I remembered, no, there was all kinds of jump scares in the duel on Cloud City. Yeah. Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. He was always popping out and you would hear the breathing first, then he would jump out. So, yeah, I, I agree. I like I think when it's the pop out and the breathing are simultaneous. That's just me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, right. I know you guys feel the same way. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the pop out and the breathing at once. It's, They're it's so good. Very <laughs> interesting. Yeah. And then, the <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. It is. Wow. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, Good stuff. All right, we got more here. We got a composer. Check this out. Natalie Holt. Yes. Um, Natalie Holt has been tapped as the uh, doing the score for the Obi Wan Kenobi series. Um, people know her from. I guess she scored the Loki series as well as the upcoming Batgirl movie. Yes. Which I'm excited about because Michael Keaton's in that. Mm. My Batman. Her Loki score is really good. Oh yeah, I haven't I haven't caught up with that series yet. No. And she's also known for she was on live on that Britain got ta British uh, Britain got talent and threw an egg at Simon Cowell on live TV. Oh, so really? Yep. Was she singing really? or something? No, she she's she was a little in the pistol. orchestra. <laughs> like she had gotten kicked <laughs> off before. Like he made a comment to her, so then uh -huh. she came back to be part of like the stage set. Wow. And then just threw an egg. Oh God. <laughs> so wow. She's she, she still gets hired by Disney. Yeah, she's <laughs> one joke away from Will Smith. It sounds <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this was, I thought, the most interesting part when they talked to her. Uh, it really wasn't so much about um, about her, but it was about that uh, when John Williams had reached out to Kathleen Kennedy and asked if he could do a theme song, because he never had a chance to do this, yeah. a theme song for Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh -huh. And apparently he said, I just want to write Benny a theme. Now, is that William saying that, or is that Natalie saying that? 
Well, I mean, this is, uh, she said, so we spoke to Lucasfilm, uh, President Kathleen Kennedy, and said, I just want to write Benny a theme. Is that something you just make up spontaneously in an interview? Benny? That John Benny? Williams calls Obi-Wan Kenobi Benny? Well, maybe that's, some th that's inspirational to him as he composes the theme. Well, maybe. I'm just saying. I maybe think he's it's thinking clear. like Benny in terms of Benny Hill, and maybe the theme will sound like <laughs> oh, the Benny Hill music <laughs> well, when they're running like around that. Slap the yeah. helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Benny. <laughs> Benny. Benny Hill, Benny Kenobi. I've never, ever, I think it ever in my, my darkest, weirdest hours have I ever thought of referring to the character as Benny. Okay? Yeah. I don't want this to catch on, folks. No, we got to stop it. if it comes from John Williams. Because you know how it is. It's going to become a thing now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if John Williams says it, you know, it's kind of cute. He's like 90. He's got the mm -hmm. turtleneck. He's like, oh, I can't wait to do a theme for Benny. <laughs> he's kind of like that, right? And But like I now if, if like, <laughs> all right, I got to work on the John Williams <laughs> impersonation. All right. Out, out, yeah, you got a lot of work to do, fool. <laughs> um. But the turtleneck, if I had the turtleneck on, it would have been more effective. Oh, yeah. But I just don't want this to catch on with fandom. Benny, can we all just promise Start each other here. there is a room, a group of Star Wars fans gathered together. We're not going to run with this Benny Kenobi business that's going to be populating uh, Everyone on social the board, media. Everyone say hi. Uh, uh, all right. All right. It's a John you. Williams thing only. It, yeah. It's a Williams exclusive. Ooh. Ooh, <laughs> Benny. Ooh, I'm like Floyd the Barber, yeah, I, John I, Williams. I was just gonna say, why is he suddenly <laughs> Floyd? Ooh, ooh. I got right. Ben, Benny a theme. Ooh, Benny. I'm kind of liking it to sheave. Yes. Oh, oh. Okay, oh. sheave to me is like fingernails on a black. I'm even sorry I said that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should be. Yeah. Um. Oh, have you, have you seen the new images from uh, Kenobi? Check this out. So it's going to be hard for you guys. Um, I'll put it up here for the camera. But <laughs> I think this is this is total Outlander gear. Have you seen this? Oh, look, this Benny's in blue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, I screwed it up. The first oh. chance I got, I said Benny. He brought up my calculator. All right, so the, yeah, this is the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, so this yeah, is... It the, doesn't add up, Swank. Yeah. It does not add up. <laughs> so, yeah, he's got the uh, he's got the Liam Neeson, that Outlander uh, rap going on. Yeah. Sort of like... Blue blue jumpsuit. Um, it's a cool look. I you know, but I'm hoping that we get to see him in the in the robes at least at some point. Well, it looks like we see a, a sort of a variant of that in some of the other things we've seen. It, it seems like the brown the robe cloak, sure. the hooded cloak, is yeah. a constant, which is important to the silhouette of the character. I don't yes. know if you guys have been hearing a lot of talk lately about the silhouettes of Star Wars characters being so essential to the character. As yeah. soon as you see the silhouette, you know it's R2, you know it's Boba Fett, you know it's Darth Vader, you know it's Ben Kenobi. Right. Ben Kenobi and the Emperor, they can sort of share a silhouette. Yeah, but he, there's, there's going to be a little more arch to the back on the Emperor. He's going to be a little more You're a little hunched over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We should do a, 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 a quiz. Emperor or Obi-Wan silhouette. You have to identify. We'll come up with like 20 examples of each. That would I actually I like the idea of like a series of like somebody's probably already done this. I got quite the silhouette. <laughs> <laughs> yes, That's I do. Either you or a potato. <laughs> I thought this hey, was excuse me. We've got another. No, we've got another. Uh, My last girlfriend was a potato. <laughs> <laughs> she had eyes for me. <laughs> Come on, give me a little groan. Oh, <laughs> God. That's a d dad joke of the convention right there. All right, we got another yeah. one here. <laughs> and this is Obi Wan. I don't know if the camera's getting this, but you can see Obi Wan now. He talk about silhouette. Yeah. So he's doing. Oh man, keeps <laughs> just. Uh, so much more comfortable in my studio at home. <laughs> so you see how he's uh, definitely undercover, hoping that nobody notices them. And this looks like this looks like Coruscant. It does. It has a similar vibe that that Hong Kong vibe. Yeah. Um, I mean, talking about Blade, Blade Runner, Blade, Blade Runner, like the Brian belly says. of the beast. If he does go to Coruscant, I mean. That's crazy. We've speculated that what he might be doing is sending people, you know, the Inquisitors and Vader and people off his path mm -hmm. because he doesn't want them to be anywhere near Luke on Tatooine. So he has to create this diversion elsewhere. I think it has been revealed that this is a new planet. Yeah, it's not Coruscant. I, I think 
Kyoto or it's Ky- it's some it, it has a some name. It does have a name. It's a little, very it's a little earthly. Very so it's this it's so this is established. We know this is not. Yeah. Huh. It's got a very similar vibe. All right. Well, I'm corrected, as usual. <laughs> um, and then there's another shot here. I think we've seen it. So Rupert Friend, but it does can you know. Uh, the Inquisitor. Confirm, yeah, as the Inquisitor that he's going to have that lightsaber. Yeah. That we first saw. I wonder the if they're going to have the helicopter abilities <laughs> like they have in Rebels that are going to be flying around with the lightsabers. Yeah, like that, you know, some of that stuff made a lot of sense in the animated uh, style. And I just, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that they walk some of that back a little bit because it just doesn't, it's, it's not going to fit for me, but. Yeah, there's some things I think believe belong firmly in animation, and other things, you know, where you can push it a little more in the in, in, uh, in the real life. I always right. thought that had a little bit to do with the fact that their force ability allows them to jump higher or levitate, so it basically just enhances it a bit. Like I don't think they could sit there and fly for two hours like they're on a helicopter. Right, right. It's not like but Inspector Gadget. No, exactly. He's got the thing no. <laughs> <around>. <laughs> But I want to know more about the Inquisitors. Actually, I thought mm-hmm. I mean Rebels was fun because it, you know, they just show up and they're shrouded in mystery. But I'm I, you know, we've got there's a lot of thought about who they were, where they came from, and I'm sure, I'm sure there's some book or a comic that explains it. Swank. But you know, it's for me yeah, until it happens on the the, the 2017 uh, run of Soul 7 through 12. They have the whole. There you go. It is you know pop, pop, pop buzz pop <laughs> buzz pop. Uh, no, so I just, but I, what I want to make sure of is, or what I want to know is, are they connected to those children of the Force that we saw in uh, in Clone Wars? Oh, yeah, that that is a thread that would be great to connect. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what I want to I want to see. I'm hoping that's the case because that would explain how he has sort of farmed this or grown this uh, group of Jedi like or um, Force sensitives. Um, rebels like the Grand Inquisitor used to be a Jedi, like a pal- or a temple guard. And so some of the ones right. they brought in were they were Jedi, and then right. they sort of fell over. They, they were the ones that were the borderline. You know, they might have fallen. Over <laughs> <and stuff. laughs> Talk to me later. <laughs> Zero the Hut was getting a little, little friendly with Brian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's get back to um, this Hayden Christian. So I mentioned this earlier. So this is a, this is a cool quote from Hayden, and he was also talking to Total Film. He's talking about Vader, he says, you know, he gets knighted towards the end, and for a couple of scenes I got to put on the suit, but my journey with the character was with Anakin Skywalker. But the character, he's he's talking about Vader now, he's such a complex character, and now getting to explore the mindset and the emotional state of Darth Vader has been a lot of fun. And I can't help but think about some of the comments, Jim, that you've made about not necessarily wanting to see that version of Vader. You don't want to see Vader in his meditation, you know, chamber, looking at a hollow of Padme, mm. little tear coming out under the helmet or whatever. Um, yeah. I do because I'm a hopeless romantic. I love that stuff. I think, um, you know, I've it's been a kind of a controversial opinion of mine yeah. when we talk about when does he become Vader, and my my theory is he never does. I don't think he ever fully gives in. Um, but you don't want that kind of lamenting Vader, right? I've always felt like Darth Vader fully committed himself to the persona of the Dark Lord of the Sith because he couldn't live without Padme. Okay. So he that. needed to reinvent himself just to survive. And conveniently, <laughs> there was this dark side that he could tap into. And that helped him bury everything about his life as Anakin. Yeah. To the point of where he wouldn't even he couldn't even acknowledge it. Um, you know, when you lie to yourself so many times, you actually believe the lie after a while. Right. Right. As we often see in U.S. politics. <laughs> but <laughs> we're not going to go there. I just couldn't resist saying that. Um, but I think that's how it was a defense mechanism for him at first. But I'm warming up to the idea of it not being so set in stone mm-hmm. where he actually has to go through this evolutionary process and he's still doing that at this point in the timeline with the Obi-Wan streaming series. And I think that'll be interesting. By the time of A New Hope, he is fully committed now to being Darth Vader. So we right. see no cracks in the armor. But he might have some cracks in the armor at this point. 
But again, I've seen the fan art of Darth Vader, helmet off, in his meditation chamber, <laughs> head in hand, <laughs> with the thought bubble of Padme over his head. I, that, to me, seems too vulnerable. Yeah. Too vulnerable. I'd like to see cracks in the armor. I don't want to see the dam completely <laughs> break and flood well, the town. And, and it can't. It can't, really, until Return of the Jedi. Yes. That is when... Yeah, that's it, it's it's it only Luke who could, who could resurrect Anakin at that point. Right. And that's, that's how he does it. And it took me years to really wrap my head around all of that as a 14-year-old who saw Return of the Jedi in 1983. It was just, it seemed too, too simplified, you know? Yeah. That was just over like that. So I'm glad we're having a second chance here now with the Kenobis. I love it. I, I mean, the fact that this stuff... It can, to the extent that it can fill in the gaps without radically altering, you know, yeah. the 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 tent poles that it's that it, that it's doing that for, I think that's when it's fun and it's exciting, and we do want it to change the way we look at the, uh, the you know, the, the stuff that came before it. I can't do this with <laughs> with zero <the> zero <laughs> puppet <laughs> looking at me like that. Be a professional, Frank. It's, like, it's such a look of judgment in his eyes. Oh, I'm judging. <laughs> oh, I'm judging. <laughs> Everybody in this room is on the heavy scrutiny. But you know when you hear. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But when you <laughs> when you hear Hayden Christensen, uh, you know of all talking about what a privilege it is to come back and. What was he doing? Smoking the pen? What what was going on there? No, I he had a little lint on it. Like oh. there's little hairs. He's here. he's made of lint. I, I'm grooming Zero the <laughs> Hut right now, ladies and gentlemen. You know, yeah, thank a, you, Jimmy Man. There's a petting zoo like, right like outside the door. <laughs> petting zoo. So I see photo ops. Yeah. Oh. Hey, Zero, want to meet a kangaroo? I hop on over there <laughs> and say hello. Uh, what what the. Oh, come on, God. I've been in this cardboard box. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Give me time uh, to warm up. But it is nice to hear Hayden Christensen talking about it being a privilege, coming back, doing the project, because it would be very easy for a guy like that, um, you know, who wasn't always given, I think, the credit that he was due. You know, we all, hey, look, we all make jokes and stuff like that. But um, I think that he tries to put a tremendous—he doesn't try. He puts a tremendous amount of heart in that in that role. And they want, you know, George wanted him to be this sort of, you know, uh, James Dean kind of guy that has mm. the the heart of gold, you know, in there. And uh, I don't want to say what what's the. It's not emo. That's not what I mean. But you know, th the roughneck. You know, the Brando, uh, the young Brando, the James Dean that has that softer side mm -hmm. to him. Mm -hmm. I think that's what they were going for. And uh, and I think, in, you know, given that was his mandate, I think it's a it's a great idea, a great idea. Well said. Well said. Uh, hey, I thought what we might want to do here. Let me see if I can pull this up. This might be fun. We have a little bit of time. Um, is there anybody out here? That is going to be in celebra at celebration. Yeah. Anybody out Just here? Just a show of hands. Okay. All right. A few people. Is there anybody out here that's going to celebration that does not have a pair of tickets to the Rebel Force Radio Bash? That would like a pair of tickets to the Radio. <laughs> All right. All right. We're gonna do some trivia. Uh, we need an opponent for you. What's your name? Uh, Terry. 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 You want to come on up here, come Terry? Come on up, Terry. <laughs> All right, Terry, ladies and gentlemen, give a round of applause for Terry. <laughs> Over here, Terry. All right, Terry's going to take and his who's, position and at who's the his microphone. Opponent? Uh, we got an opponent. Come on up here, bro. All right, what's your name? Flynn. Flynn, ladies and gentlemen. Flynn, round of applause for Flynn. <laughs> Flynn is here. Terry is here, and we're going to. Have, a, have them square off. Yes, sir. Trivia, yeah. and this is for uh, tickets to the bash. Tickets to the bash. Tickets Terry. to the bash. Wait, maybe you guys can go together. Well, we're booth buddies already, so we might as well make it official. Oh, exactly right. <laughs> they're gonna win. Exactly right. So they're gonna win. Okay. All right. So <laughs> let's see. We got a. Uh, anybody got a coin? We want to flip a coin here. I've got an app on my phone. <laughs> He's got All the right, coin do flip that, app. Do <laughs> <laughs> he he knew it. somehow that we were gonna need to flip a coin, so he downloaded the app. Heads or tails? Sure. Tails. 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 All right. 
And the coin is flipped, and we have what are you, uh, heads or tails. 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 Okay. 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 Right, you first. All right. All right. The way this is going to work is we've got Obi Wan Kenobi quotes. All right. Spans all of uh, the characters' history in Star Wars, and you have to fill in the gap. Okay. So you're going to go first. All right. All right. Try. So the first quote is, "Hello." Tank. <laughs> Come on. I, 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 it's going to warm I, I, up. It's going to get harder. I mean, there. <laughs> I mean, let's try a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think I hear that in my sleep because that's one of my part of my openings from my, fill in the blank. my YouTube videos. Fill in this blank. Obi Blank Kenobi. <laughs> Uh, yes, that's correct. Hello <laughs> there. All wait, right, is next it question. Wait, is it Obi Benny? <laughs> <laughs> Obi Benny. All right. Why is everyone calling me Broby One again? Did I ask people to do that? Yes. I did. I did. Because <laughs> I was like, wow, that's weird. Everyone's calling me Broby One. And J Dog. And J. Well, J Dog, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Steve Sansweet tried to get that happening years ago. Okay. All right. You ready for your next one? Is me again? Yeah. Yeah. He's got to screw up in order for you for you to okay. uh, get a get a shot here. All right. Okay, these aren't the blank you're looking you for. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> well, these are hardcore fans, and you're Can't asking me harder. softball That's questions. This softball question. I'm going to go with droids. Okay. Droids plural? No, it, it's actually Cylons. Yeah. <laughs> plural. <laughs> Cylons you're looking Cylons. for. <laughs> Come on, Frank. All right. Challenge these people. <laughs> Chancellor Palpatine, blank are our specialty. All right, that's it. I guess. Okay. You, you, you All right. Uh, let's go. I'm, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll go with. Uh, uh, is it negotiations? No. Is that your final answer? Yeah, this is his final answer. Yeah. Yeah. Negotiations, <laughs> judges. <laughs> Try again, you sir. Chancellor Palpatine, Sith lords are our specialty. Uh, yeah. That's right. Sith lords. <laughs> Speciality. Doesn't he add extra? It's our speciality. Speciality. Oh, all right. This is going to get tough. Now we're going to go back to uh, we're going to go to rebels. This is the uh, the countdown or the, the the showdown between Maul and Kenobi. And he says, "Look at what I've blank above risen." Judges. Risen. I, I didn't know that one. Yes. Wow. You got it. Nailed it. Look at what I've risen. Hey, we, we have a are tie we, game, don't are we? Are we keeping track of points? I wasn't keeping track of points. Yeah, two, two and two. Two and two. Yeah, two yeah, two. yeah, 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 yeah. All right. I got it. I got it. Okay. How All many right. questions are we going to ask? There's ten. Ten. Let's do like best of net. Like best of like seven. How about next next one? Because it'll be a tie. I'm game. a wrestler. I'm fond of best of seven. So. All right. All right. Works for me. Be careful of your blank, Palpatine. I believe that's two words. Flatulence. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful oh, oh. of your friend. 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 I even tried to throw you off. Yes, friend is I correct. Wow. Like friendship <laughs> with, but. How did you try to throw him off? Because I didn't use the right inflection. Oh, tricky. I mean, it's, um, <laughs> it he can All also right. do the alphabet without singing the song. <laughs> 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 um, blank, uncivilized. So uncivilized. Yes, of course. Well, I was going right. to say blasters. We got are one more. So if he, uncivilized. All right. He, if he gets this, you lose. All right, Terry. You right that with that? Okay. The pressure's on, Terry. All right. Anakin, my allegiance is to the Republic. To blank. To democracy. <laughs> is that Let's it? See? That's it. That's yeah. it. All right. All right, that's it. You did it, man. Congrats. Actually, you both okay. win. You guys We're both, both going right. to get tickets. To oh, I was going to split okay. the tickets with him. That's wow. Even better. Yes. yes. Thank you. Make five, sure man. we get your information before Absolutely. we wrap Absolutely. this up. Okay. Congratulations. Thank, thank you guys you, thank very you. much. Thank, thank you. Appreciate it. I thought we'd have thank a little you. fun with that. You know. Yeah. Sure. Just scribble down. Um, uh, you've got just a. my card. Sure. Yeah, that's fine. Wait, I think is Eric from Phoenix here. Eric from Phoenix. Get up here, Eric. It's very fitting that he close us out here. Come on up. Get up here, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
time to pay your dues. So Eric, Eric from Phoenix, ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for RFR VIP, Eric from Phoenix. That's something we do on uh, RFR on Patreon. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of our supporters here at the show. Uh, we do a bonus podcast called RFR Q&A. And RFR Q&A is hosted by members of the RFR VIP tier at patreon.com slash Radio. Uh, Jeff Holland is here. He's an RFR VIP. Um, and is that uh, Chris Mox back there? Is Chris, oh, there's Christian Chris Mox. Mox here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there he is. The Mocktails is here. And uh, catch him while he's sober. Uh, <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> but uh, Eric from Phoenix is an RFR VIP and somebody who contributes to our RFR Q&A show. And that's a show when RFR VIPs bring the topics of conversation to the microphones and we discuss. So we're going to try to do here in eight minutes a quick RFR Q&A. Eric, you have the topic of conversation. And uh, so we're going to roundtable this real quick. Uh, what are we going to be talking about on this Q&A? Well, um, my lovely wife, Andrea, who's here with me, mm -hmm. came up with the uh, topic and we were reflecting back on conventions and Star Wars Celebration and thinking about what's the best part of going to Star Wars Celebration. And what we reflected on was waiting in line. Okay. And I, I know That's waiting in lines. Part? Well, yes. so so uh, in Indianapolis, we were at Star, Star Wars mm. Celebration 3, and we were in line all day, and we met a uh, couple – couple individuals that we now hang out with at every Star Wars celebration and that's been wow, 17 that's years cool. ago that's wow and yeah. uh, wh th what's better yet is I waited in line we waited in line we got to know them we hang out and then she went and waited in line all day at the celebration store and I'm not joking it was literally all day at the celebration store yeah. with these folks and how much fun it is to get to know people from all over the country or all over the world seven minutes here seven yeah minutes. <laughs> so so getting to know people getting to meet people and then we ran into somebody she waited in line with in tucson here a couple weeks ago that she waited in line with to get into the store who lived in florida who's originally from england and then moved to tucson we just randomly ran into him oh at, my gosh. at uh, tucson toy show so that's so cool that's the topic people getting to know people getting to know getting, getting to know you <laughs> Getting um, to know all the about well, you I nerds. Have to, I have to say that for me, the probably the most profound getting to know you moment at a Star Wars celebration was getting to know this guy. It was Star Wars Celebration 4, and we had already been working together virtually. Yeah. Wh before that was cool. Before that was like a thing. Yeah. I mean, we had to like really kind of push the limits of what, you know, our internet speeds and all that stuff mm -hmm. back then to be able to get those... Jimmy, we all know from those old days how much Jimmy loves Skype. Oh <laughs> yeah, <laughs> still has the scars. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, Skype. But yikes! It was uh, it was one of those cool moments when, you know, you you've you think you know somebody and then you finally get together with them in person and, you know, it's it's uh, it just adds it's it just adds that extra layer you know onto the relationship and the friendship and just cements it and it was fun because it was like we had known each other for such a long time but we had never met. And uh, it was awesome. Yeah, so it was that great. Was definitely one that sticks out mm -hmm. for me at C four. Well, I I knew at that convention when we were together in the same room for the first time that uh, I really enjoy making this guy laugh. <laughs> <laughs> That's something <laughs> I enjoy doing, and uh, so that was uh, a beautiful uh, friendship was born there essentially, and we we include Billy Mack in on this. Yeah, for it's sure. Like a brotherly thing, and I've always enjoyed sharing my my fandom my whole life with with Billy. And uh, so he'll be with us in Anaheim and everything. He couldn't make it to this one. He's got a gig, big shot musician. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that, that is a that is a just a great one. I, the reason I did this I in the first place back in 2006, I uh, actually the year prior I had hosted a radio show for CBS Radio. It was a special leading up to Revenge of the Sith. I pitched this to CBS and they they ran with it. And I went to Star Wars Celebration and interviewed all of these actors and stuff. And I had the time of my, my life. And I wanted to replicate that. And there weren't any opportunities in broadcast radio to do that once Revenge of the Sith came and left. And uh, so I stumbled upon this guy's show and uh, loved the chemistry and, and heard what he was doing and knew that I could maybe help him get from point A to point B with the show. And uh, as it, 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 I remember the first time I, I talked to these guys, they gave me an assignment and they wanted me to create a new show intro. And they thought they were going to trip me up 
by giving me the uh, song from the Return of the Jedi special edition, Jedi Rocks, that one with Joe Yauza, mm -hmm. who goes, yeah, you know, all that. <laughs> and I think they thought it was really going to mess me up. It was a little up. bit of hazing. We just yeah, thought, a let's little see bit. how good Mr. Chicago Radio really is. <laughs> and uh, I, I dove into that little assignment and came up with something pretty good, I thought. <laughs> and uh, it really stuck and kind of became a trademark of the show. And we got along really well I after remember we that. got the email with the attachment and we listened to it. We were like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> he is really good. They wanted to burn he me out. Good. And I figured, I figured you guys had had a thing going for a few months. And then here I come segueing into it. And yeah. uh, the first thing I would have thought is this guy's trying to take over. And, uh, oh, we thought no, that. that's we that's thought only that. human. I nature. still think that sometimes. <laughs> uh, no, well, we do need to wrap things up. Um, thank you very much, Eric. Thank you, Eric. Here. Thank you to the Babu Freaks. Yeah, thank thanks, you freaks. all of you yes. for being here. All you guys. Special thanks to our uh, our podcast room hosts, yes. the Orman Brothers. Yes. They'll be playing at the Ryman tonight <laughs> also. Uh, but this Matt, Brian, sweet. and Jim, thank you guys very much. Thank you to Michael Havens for having us. It's been awesome. Special shout out to one of my oldest friends in the world, John Pica, Serial Box Podcast. I've known John since I was 11 years old. So it's awesome to uh, see him. They so got they oh, got yeah. stories. Yeah. John's been drinking curdled milk all weekend <laughs> long, and it's <laughs> beginning to affect him in ways that uh, he never expected. Quite honestly, when he walked in here, that goatee was brown. <laughs> <What's this laughs> but anyway, thank you all so much. Appreciate it. We love you all. We'll see you next time for Rebel Force Radio. I'm Jason. And I'm Jimmy Mack. And remember, Force will be with you always. All Thanks, right. Guys. Thank you. This summer, saddle up in Smashville as the Music City hosts the hottest party of the summer, WWE SummerSlam Nashville. For the first time ever at Nissan Stadium, a little bit country, a little bit rock and roll, a whole lot of kick ass. WWE SummerSlam, Saturday, July 30. Tickets on sale now.